In this module, we look at the management of monitoring and control during plant operation. Here we can see the elements that should be monitored in a solar PV facility. The main elements to be monitored are the inverters and meters. The parameters to be monitored in the inverter are the instant power, energy produced and CO2 emissions. The main incidents that might affect an inverter are electronic failure or electrical failure. An electrical failure could stop the whole PV facility. In the meter, the kilowatt hours produced and the load profile need to be monitored and controlled. The only incident that might occur in the meter is a meter stop, which would also mean the stop of the whole PV facility. That's why both the inverter and the meter need to be carefully tracked by the monitoring system. The panels and transformers should also be monitored. On the panels, you can monitor both the current and the irradiance. The current is quite easy to monitor with devices that are readily available in the market. You can detect solar panels that are producing lower electricity than they should using a calibrated cell to measure irradiance. The meteorological station will give you measures of wind speed and temperature. Temperature has a direct effect on the solar panel's production capacity. So, as we saw in the last chapter, using a calibrated cell with a temperature sensor, we know more or less when panels are producing less electricity than they should. That provides technical staff with a heads up so that they can go and check the panels. Wind speed might be really important when sun trackers are being used. High wind speeds can alter the alignment of panels or damage trackers. When high wind speed is detected, the sun trackers can be placed in an orientation where the wind will not damage them. The state of sensors that measure the flow of current and the system's protective devices can also be monitored. With the current sensors, you can monitor the current in panel rays while the state of protection must be monitored if you want to install remote control systems. Here we have the topology of a monitoring system. The different inputs might be sensors, inverters or the meter. The communications port that is usually used with the inverter is an RS-232 or 485. An RS-485 is also normally used with a meter. Newer meters also support an internet connection. You will have a choice between wireless and wired connections. Normally wired connections are recommended because they offer greater reliability. There's also a choice between logical and non-logical communications. With non-logical communications, we have to use a converter. There are many of them on the market. The most common one from Moxa converts a serial bus to a different type of bus. Otherwise, we can use logic in our communications using a data log logger that gathers data from all the devices and allows that data to be easily analyzed by a different computer. Here uh, we have the control room where we might have a server and display. With the server, we need to gather all data from all ele elements. That data can come directly from the device or via data logger, depending on your setup. And that data is then available for analysis to create information or to generate alerts. Internet communications can be used to send data to be visualized remotely. There are different types of alarms. The most effective is the siren, which can be heard all over the solar installation. But increasingly texts are being sent to the relevant staff or to all staff. Finally, it is important to save all this information outside the solar facility. And here's an overview of how the typical routing for a monitoring system appears. Once the data has been gathered and analysed, the level of performance of the PV facility is known and decisions can be made on whether corrective action is needed or not. But if the performance is slightly lower than average, then we should analyse all the parameters in the solar plant, especially those coming from the inverters, and take all the actions or modifications the system needs to improve these parameters. These modifications can be done remotely or in situ, depending on the remote control system, but usually it's necessary to have staff in the PV facility. 
all the modifications must be included in the preventive maintenance plan to ensure it's undertaken periodically to improve plant performance. If performance is lower than average, a malfunction may be occurring. Normally underperformance will prompt a monitoring system alarm so that changes can be made urgently. Every time there's an incident, a report must be generated so the checks will be added in to the corrective maintenance processes. It's important to have an incidence and parameters log that can be checked with fur when further incidents occur. And here's a basic topology for the remote control system. You can decide between different types of remote control depending on the level of performance you want. This remote control system has only on and off switches. In the case of high winds, for example, you could shut down a sun tracking system with this and reactivate it once more when the wind drops. Monitoring and security systems are also devices that might be used with this type of activation and deactivation remote option. And this is the topology for an advanced remote control system. A remote control system like this requires greater robustness and needs greater bandwidth because such a wide range of elements in the solar PV system must be managed remotely. This kind of system allows updates and modifications to the orientation of the tracking system. New configurations or the addition of new meters or inverters are possible. All the parameters in the security system could be monitored. We'll see later an example of a solar plant with this type of monitoring system that can be configured remotely, together with a security system that includes CCTV access over the internet. When considering solar plant communications, we have to consider two types, internal and external. Internal communications are between devices, data loggers, and elements within the PV facility, while external communications are communications between our main office and the outside world. For internal communications, we have to decide between wireless and wired topologies. Wired systems are recommended. Among the different types of wired systems, the most commonly used are RS-485 and the internet systems. You can find a lot of information on both of them on the internet. Converters can be used to change one signal to another. It's typical to use optical fibre running from the control room to the different areas across the site and then to use a converter to get the data gathered from the RS-485 bus and to convert it into an optical fibre bus. For external communications there are again different topologies. These include the basic telephone network, ADSL, a LAN internet connection, satellite communications or the cell phone internet, GPRS and UMTS. In deciding on the correct communication topology for your plant, robustness should be the critical factor. Here we have a comparison table of technologies that could be used for remote communications. The more stars in a cell, the better the technology. While satellite offers the best coverage, it also comes with the highest installation and operation cost. UMTS cell phone technology is probably most recommended as the networks continue to spread and develop at a rapid pace worldwide. If there is a telephone network coverage in the area of the PV facility, that might be the cheapest and most reliable way to communicate with the solar plant. An important issue to consider when designing a remote monitoring system is remote mo meter reading. Nowadays, electricity companies are installing remote meter reading technologies in most of the countries of the world. It's really useful for invoicing the utility in particular. Another advantage of remote meter reading is that if the data is well processed, the electricity company might be able to use it to improve grid performance. Here we can find two alternative topologies for electricity company meter reading. A GSM modem could be installed for each meter within the PV facility. Where there are several meters to be read, it might be interesting to install a converter from internet to RS-485 so that a single modem can be used reducing communication costs. And it's important to know whether in the future PLC communications might be applied. Before constructing a new PV facility, it's important to learn from the electricity company what their future intentions are or whether you would be better choosing GSM communications. Most problems we find 
come from communications in the P that come from communications in the PV facility are failed attempts to use the same communication system in different facilities, the incompatibility of solutions at different facilities, and coverage failure. A system that is working properly in one solar facility might not work in another because software may differ when different aged versions are used. Also, the protocols in different countries might be different. For example, some monitoring equipment may not work in Spain as Spain uses a different protocol to the rest of the world. Sometimes mixing, mixing different solutions from different manufacturers may produce system malfunctions and particularly where the monitoring or remote control of a plant is dependent on cell phone communications, failures in network co coverage can have devastating effects.